developed. It was a very beautiful day, uh, strikingly so, uh, for that time of the year. But today was it was almost like a, um, a North Dakota fall day where you can just see for hundreds of miles. Uh, generally, as you're going over the Verrazano Bridge, you can look up the Hudson, um, across the bay, and see the uh, Statue of Liberty. You can see the you could see the Twin Towers. You could see Manhattan, you could see New Jersey. I mean, it was just an absolutely beautiful morning. You could see forever. I'm a commercial airline pilot. My part-time job is to guard. My full-time job is airline pilot. So that morning I was scheduled to fly a flight out of uh, John F. Kennedy International Airport. My crew chief at the time, Jay Johnson, came and said, uh, said a plane just hit the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, as pilots were looking at it, wondering how that could have happened on, a, again, a clear VFR day, much like we have, uh, have out here today. That, you know, it's it's pretty, pretty hard to accidentally fly into, into a building preparing the aircraft to be uh, taxi off the gate. And we pushed off the gate at 9.03. 9.03 is when Flight 175 hit the second tower, one of our flights. We both were calling home trying to find out, you know, what the status was, how our families were doing, because me, I had um, two aunts and an uncle that worked down there in that area. There was a, a muffled sound of an explosion and an impact on the west wing of the Pentagon. We were called in to the armory that day to uh, prepare for whatever came down. And I'll never forget this as long as I live, the view across that field. And you could tell it was a Pentagon that was on fire. Intercepting aircraft, you know, 100 feet off the Hudson and helicopters and just, you know, dodging the Statue of Liberty and Burlington ground uh, said, uh, go directly to your military controller. You don't need to talk to anybody. You guys own the air. You, you know something tragic has happened. You know, you know people have died and they're suffering um, below you. So it, um, <clears throat> it's something you never forget. I just looked up and I just said, dear Lord, give us the strength for about to do. And we went in. We got here uh, the night it happened, about uh, zero 03. So we've been out here a couple of days. Uh, we're here until uh, until the governor uh, decides that uh, that the police department uh, or the civil authorities here uh, no longer need us. But uh, we're here to assist until uh, until they make that determination. And we're uh, we're actually glad to be here to be uh, assisting in the effort. Morale's, morale's pretty good because everyone's out here for the same cause. I mean, you got all the city fire department. Uh, police departments, everyone from uh, joining states coming in, other units coming in, so everyone's working together. I mean, the public is helping out tremendously with the food and the water supply, so morale with the troops is, is excellent, I would say. Well, you know, National Guard was supposed to help people, so I mean, I'd, I'd rather do this than anything else, help people. Anything personal on way, just God bless everybody out here. About it. I remember hearing an, uh, uh, a plane approaching the Pentagon, and at first I thought, oh my gosh, here we go again. They're going to hit us from the other side this, this time. Um, but I remember turning around, just, just looking up, and uh, um, I was extremely pleased by what I saw. <laughs> uh, it was one of our uh, National Guard F-16s that uh, to me seemed like it was just flying on the deck across the Potomac River almost at treetop level. Uh, he made a turn in a pass over the Pentagon and and when he did it, it's as though the, the afterburners on that F-16 kicked in and away he went and the the sight and the sound of that F-16 provided a sense of assurance that uh, we had top cover. 
I've spoken to people who who mentioned that, and it's nice to hear confirmation that that did happen. There's a, a good story about Colonel Phil McNair, who's now retired, who literally belly crawled with his team of folks that he was in a meeting with, Pentagon. Uh, but he did some very courageous things that day. Uh, kept his calm, led the team out that he was with, uh, ended up getting a Purple Heart. Major Battaglio, during the recovery operation, he noticed there was a Marine Corps flag off the fourth floor of the Pentagon. As soon as he came down, here's four grown men, Major Patelio, Eric Jones, Captain Jarrett from the Marine Corps, and myself, hugging each other. First time we're showing humility, first time we're showing any signs of emotion over the last four days. It was a powerful experience to see everyone giving. There was, there was no money, there was no... There was no greed, there was no envy, there was no jealousy. It was just work and caring. I can't remember how many times I, by Pentagon employees I was thanked or said, hey, Sergeant, thank you for being here. The fireman had picked up uh, an American flag from one of the offices. The flag was still on, a, on, its, on, the, on the staff, and he lowered that flag down to uh, one of his buddies on the ground. Finally, when they attached the flag to that fence post, it was as though everyone, for just a few moments, stopped what they were doing. And they all applauded and cheered, many with, with, with tears, you know, running down their face. There was our flag as a symbol of hope. You see all the, you know, the, the people that lost loved ones, you know, 180 or so at the Pentagon and then 3,000 at New York. Um, and that affects you. If it doesn't, you're not human, you know. But while we were there, you know, I think the military training kicks in and you just, you do your job. I think it's a, it's a tremendous statement of where we are as a country, knowing that the political differences might be there, but we don't take it out on the military and, and the first responders and, and we support them. So you saw people coming out again like I don't think we'd seen really since maybe World War II. When we found out that one of our own had lost a family member, every September 11th for the last 10 years, you know, I send her a text. Other members send her a text, you know, just thinking about her and her family. Uh, and that's just what we do. And I saw Sergeant Major of the Army and Secretary of Defense carrying a bodyboard himself. You know, here the, the highest ranking individuals of the military, you know, didn't matter what their rank was, didn't matter what service they were, they were helping. I think sacrifices, you know, it's, it's, in, it's in the American spirit. And so, so they did that. That's the folks on, you know, Flight 93. It's, it's one huge team, one huge fight. Um, everybody's just out making it happen. Came up with this bright idea, right? And say, oh, you know, I'm going to admire my wife 15 minutes a day, you know? And I'm sure there were people that are living today that wish they would have said something. So I take that with me every day and make sure that, regardless if I'm telling somebody that they get on my damn nerves that day, or that I love them, or whatever the case may be, however I'm feeling, I try to take advantage of that time. I think about all the people that came together from all over the world to help us in a time of crisis. I was just doing the best what we can to, to come together, hopefully win this war on terror and hopefully be able to live in peace. I think in times of tragedy, uh, Americans um, reach out to each other. Our folks, they don't do it for the money. They just do it because they want to serve something larger than themselves. We have to go back to the golden rule. As hard as it may be, we have to go back there. And that, that has to be our baseline for going forward. Not the desire for vengeance to get even. Uh, uh, not to feed off the, the anger, the frustration, the sense of powerlessness, the, in some cases the hatred. That can't be the baseline or we won't realize a new beginning. We have got 
to learn how to live with each other on this earth. People want to live in peace. It's amazing what uh, those stars and stripes mean to the people of this country. And it, 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 it is a, a, a nation of the free, the home of the brave. It does offer opportunity that no other nation on the face of this earth does. And to see the symbol of our nation flying proudly that day uh, again gave us all tremendous hope and the promise of better days ahead.